in the evenings I'm I'm here on my own. Sometimes it seems an awful long time. That's the worst time of the day for me in the evenings. Meet Stan. He's 93 years old and for the past six months he's been adjusting to life on his own after his wife sadly passed away. I would like to do something, you know, I ought to start drawing again, you know. It's something, it must be something you can do and concentrate on. Stan has been a train driver for over 60 years and has travelled all over the world. The engine is the Flying Scotsman and uh, I was driving it, you know, because we had it down at Swanage for oh, two or three months, I think and I drove it several times. He's driven over a hundred different types of trains over his long and successful career. And it's what they gave me at Swanage when I worked on my hundredth different class of engine. Stan lives in the busy seaside town of Bournemouth, but he often finds himself alone. He's one of many old age pensioners in the town who are suffering from loneliness, but this is a problem on a much larger scale. In the UK alone, 51% of over 75s live by themselves and 11% of that number can go an entire month without talking to anybody. Fortunately for Stan, he has a loving family who he sees regularly, but since the passing of his wife Joan, for the first time, Stan has found himself alone. For six months, I, I did everything. I can't drive now. Uh, I gave up driving when just after my wife died and because uh, I didn't feel well 93 I didn't really feel capable of doing it so I thought well best to pack up before I I did have an accident or anything so that was it but there are organizations out there that hope to tackle this exact problem a few months ago Stan decided to try out a local lunch club that helps the elderly people get out the house during the day this lunch club has been running for 14 years and helps to transform the lives of elderly people in the local area. During the club, the elderly guests can play bingo, get involved in conditioning exercises, fun games and can even partake in some knitting. Ruth McIntyre is the activities coordinator for the club and works together with a close unit of volunteers to organise the twice weekly get-togethers. People that come here and their confidence is really low where they've been isolated for such a long time and they come here and just to see the changes in them is just amazing. You know, there's just different people. Well, I have to plan the activities, um, obviously, before we run the day. Um, and I have a great team of volunteers who are here to help. And it's, it's just a really fun day. It's not, it's not hard work. It's just, it just rolls really well. Alongside Ruth is Eddie Kachow, who has been volunteering at the club for nearly a year and has seen the positive effects it can have on those who go. It gets them mixing with other people. Like, you probably know that a lot of houses, you go past a lot of these houses, but you don't know who's inside these houses, what people do, how people live. And times when, like, at like Christmas and occasions and gatherings when people really need to be like, together with family, not everyone has that opportunity. And I think places like this enable others to be able to come through and actually have a voice. The work the club does is a cause close to Eddie's heart. The story is I used to have a family friend that, well we still do, that helped out a lot and he's kind of been like a, almost like a father figure to me. And he was involved in the war, he did a lot of things and a lot of the time he would just talk He'd fill me on on what used to happen, what used to go on and stuff like that. And he'd take me to air shows, so I got to know a lot of the planes that, that happened in the war and all these things. And for him, his, his condition now is like, because of old age, he's deteriorating. And it's like, I feel like I should give back because he taught me a lot. Seeing the club's members come out of their shell has shown Eddie the importance of groups like these. A lot of the time you look at the elderly and you think they're, they're either quiet or they're maybe too, too formal. But actually, some of these people are quirky, and yeah, one of the guys, he, um, it was a, I can't remember what the joke he was, but it's a little bit of a rude one. And um, yeah, he, he came out with it, and, was, and we laughed together amongst 
volunteers and it was like, I didn't expect this guy to say that his age is old, like he must be like almost 90, but you, and you look at him and he just smiles at you and you think to yourself, you're a cheeky guy, like, you're a cheeky guy, but yeah. For most, a short time at the lunch club is a much needed escape from their daily routine. I mean, a couple of hours in, in eternity if you're on your own. I know there's television and distractions like that, but um, that's not like people with you. Most people that attend the club say that the companionship is why they come, as it gives them an opportunity to talk to people and get them out of the house. So who, who are you going to speak to when you sat indoors all day? The phone doesn't ring, you're watching the telly, oh you're reading. In 2011 the government backed campaign to end loneliness began and saw local councils get involved with various non-profit organisations to help tackle the problem. This means for people like Stan there is a place to go when you're in need of a cup of tea and a good chit chat with others who are in the same position. An issue like this is especially important in the months around Christmas when the reality of loneliness can be at its worst. Here people can find company when they really need it. With clubs like these being run up and down the country, the often unspoken issue of loneliness is finally being addressed.